This is In Touch with Terry, a power packed podcast for the medical aesthetics industry. I just discovered your podcast and I feel like I've hit a gold mine. This is someone who's got a lot of knowledge. She's been there, done that. Terry Ross is a former Fortune 500 executive, international speaker, and Terry Ross Consulting. Just listening to her energy and her passion and just how hardcore she is. Her knowledge of the industry and just her connections in general are phenomenal. In Touch with Terry will bring you solutions to increase operational and employee efficiency and practice profitability. Plus, feature some of the top industry experts as guests. Terry, your courses and your podcast are just so helpful. She made me feel like I could do this. Three, two, one. Here we go. Now, here's Terry. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next episode of In Touch with Terry. I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. And as you know, this podcast is really intended for you, for industry, for me to bring you best practices, more importantly, some of the best industry experts, and a little bit of like a business development show because here at TRC, you guys know that my goal is to help you guys be efficient, be profitable, make money, give you the tips, the tricks, the tools, the training, the resources, the everything that you need to feel confident about running in a a successful aesthetic practice. So today, I have the pleasure and the honor to bring you someone who is a serial entrepreneur. His name is Jeremy Laceris. And Jeremy is the founder and CEO of Payment Brokers, which is Verify. We're going to be talking about something that is an extremely hot topic. So I'm going to give you the title right now because you're going to want to grab a pen and paper, a drink, and not go away and hang on to every word of this podcast. But we're going to be talking about swiping away your credit card processing fees without changing anything. I'm going to say it again. If you could swipe away your credit card processing fees without changing anything, would you do that? So today with me, again, is somebody who I've met a couple of months ago. As you know, I am always looking here at TRC to uh, broaden our scope of work and really partner with the best of the best in the industry and beyond to bring you guys the greatest resources. So one of the things we do is to help you guys be efficient and make money. The other things we do is help you to cut expenses. So we know that merchant processing, let's be honest, it's a racket. And things, candidly, I didn't even know. But even in my own company, I'm experiencing. So today with me, again, Jeremy Laceris. He is a serial entrepreneur, an investor, former global marketing and communications executive. Over the past two decades, Jeremy has founded and led eight of his companies to successful exits. Again, Jeremy is the founder and CEO of Payment Brokers, uh, which is Verify, a fintech company focused on AI enabled cost reductions. I want to continue a little bit about his background because it's just quite impressive. He's been an entrepreneur since the age of six. Look at him now. He still looks six. 19 years as a global VP of Marcom. Again, $23 billion in Chinese and US conglomerate. SaaS payments and healthcare since 2021. Rang the bell at the NASDAQ, and he's been a 100% bootstraps entrepreneur and founder. So, Jeremy, welcome to In Touch with Terry. Really excited and honored to have you here. Likewise. Excited to hang out today. I know. It'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. So you're really the first person with such an incredible and impressive background that I have come to find. Your company is is quite impressive with what you're doing. So number one, kind of about our partnership, and two... You know, tell us a little bit about the organization. Sure. So I came from the credit card processing industry. It's not a pretty industry. It's pretty unique in the way that they work with different merchants. And what I found over the last 10 years or more, they're really predatory when it comes to pricing. So I set it up a long time ago. I had an e-commerce development company. And for me, credit card processing was just a plug-and-play ancillary business because we were doing people's e-commerce websites. And they were like, how do I connect credit cards? Like, How do I take payments? So we set up a company years and years ago, um, maybe 15 or 18 years ago, called Payment Brokers. And so we were a reseller for third-party credit card processing agencies. And being a reseller, you learn a lot. You learn how their practices are. 
And I remember like the first year or two just getting harassed by companies like, hey, my terminal's down or hey, my system's not working. And there's, so there's a lot of customer service and a lot of things that we didn't anticipate. And, and part of that customer service was getting phone calls about the bill. Hey, my, my fees went up. And I was like, well, I didn't, I don't change them. I'm just a re- like, I'm literally handing you off to a third party. They're setting you up. I just make a commission from it. And so they would raise pricing two or three or four or five times. And I just couldn't understand what was going on. So I dove deeper. I found out how they price and why they've made it extraordinarily complicated. Now, if you go to Canada or you go you know, overseas, they don't have this level of complication that we've created here in the US. And so what's happened now is they've made it so impossible to manage that not even a forensic accountant can help you. And I, I truly mean that. I've actually handed a statement to a forensic accountant who works for a big five and said, can you analyze this statement? Can you just give me how, wh- what's the actual true cost of it? The, and the, the data is public, right? So you can go on Visa MasterCard's website and download what's called the interchange guide. <laughs> it's like a 80 page guideline on how they price every single different type of credit card. Now you and I know because you see like two, 2% cash back here and 3% cash back there and like a fuel rewards card. And all of that complexity is, co- they have made it even more complex by figuring out how to price what you pay with what level of security that you take the credit card, the type of credit card you take, and how you accepted that payment. Was it on a terminal? Did they swipe it? Did they use a pin? You know, if they put their pin in, did they use a chip? Like there's so many different rates and fees. And I think we looked at north of 1,500 different rates and fees and what we call interchange. Interchange is not non-negotiable. Like you're not getting my 2% cash back. <laughs> Sorry. I like my travel points and my stuff, right? So you're never going to be able to negotiate that. But above that, credit card processors make money at interchange. And then above interchange, there are layers and layers and layers of people. And I hope that we get to cover some of those layers today because as you find, there's now software vendors that are like, well, we have integrated payments. They've all learned I can get cut in as a silent partner in your business at a small percentage. And all I have to do is be the one that handholds the relationship between the processor. And it's become really, really anti-competitive. My One of my first companies, it just about put me out of business. One of my first e-commerce companies was an online furniture retailer. This was like 2001 or 2002. And I built an online furniture store, one of the first of its kind, And I was taking credit cards, which was a nightmare back then. Like e-commerce didn't really exist. And so every time I took a credit card, I was taking a huge risk because I think even credit card processing companies were trying to figure out how it was going to work. And I got tons of chargebacks because people would get furniture. And it was like, well, you know, this cushion wasn't perfect, so I'm going to charge it back until it gets fixed. It ended up almost putting me out of business. I ended up selling that company, so it worked out in my favor. But that's kind of what led me into even offering that as a service. And and so it went on. It still continues to this day to be an extremely embedded relationship to a point where I've seen companies pay six and seven and 8% of their revenue just for credit card processing. It's wrong. And so there was a point when I sold my credit card processing agency that I was like, I can fix this there's a better way. And I dug in later, I helped a friend and this is what really started payment brokers. He said, man, I'm just getting crushed. And I'm like, Oh, give me the info info. And I sat down and it took me like 45 minutes to do an analysis, which he doesn't do a ton of business, but I started marking it up and I was like, dude, you're paying like 4%. This is crazy. Let me make a phone call for you. So I know that in every credit card processing company, there is a very specific, very well-designed loss prevention team, right? They don't want to lose your business because they're tied to it forever and they're tied to your revenue. So they, they'll fight for this business. So I called and negotiated on his behalf because I knew what interchange was and I knew how much was above interchange. And I was like, you guys are making insane amount of money. You're making you know 90 or 100 basis points over cost which means you're, you're already profitable at cost, but you're making 1% on this business. And they took it all off. They were like, no, yeah, no, no, we don't want to lose the business. 
stay and we'll, we'll match whatever you have. So I wrote up an offer and I sent it to him because I owned a credit card processing company once upon a time. So I'm like, hey, here you go. Here's an offer. They accepted it. It was done. Saved him $6,000 a month. So from that point forward, he's like, dude, thank you. You know, I'll send you a bottle of wine. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> this, is, this is a business. The problem is that I can't even do this manually. It takes way too much time to do an analysis. And every single statement that we get is like a totally different set of jargon, all designed to confuse people and make it so impossible to read. It's not like when you go buy a car or there's a truth in lending box, you know, it like tells you exactly what your payments are going to be. And this is so complicated that there is absolutely no way for people to sit down and figure this out on their self, on their own. And a lot of companies will do that. Like, well, they'll see this and they'll like pick up their phone. I'm going to call my processor and ask for a discount. It's like the worst thing you can do because they can play games. And I, I'll show you some examples, but they can actually reduce your fees and you end up paying more. That sounds really weird, but there's all a game of transaction fee and rates. And then there's all sorts of other hidden fees that people don't know understand at all regulatory and compliance stuff. And it's just messy. When I started Payment Brokers, my goal was, well, restarted it, I should say. Um, I started building this technology with, that we're now calling Verify, which does all of that work. And I want to say AI, but it's, not, I mean, it's, it's machine learning, right? It reads the statement, uses optical character recognition to identify these terms that they just make up. And I have a database of proprietary information on what they call those rates and fees, whether they're real or not real. And then once I learn a company, I know what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. They do it to everybody. So there's no reason to uproot your relationships because the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. They all raise pricing. And I understand why they have to be able to do it. I'm not saying they shouldn't be able to change pricing at will without notice. They roll out credit cards all the time. So... Are you saying, hey, this new credit card came out. I don't want to take that card. It's like, you can't really do that. So they have to be able to adjust because their cost basis changes and they have to be able to do it without notifying the company. So I understand it, but then they just use it in the most nefarious way, right? Like at that point, they're like, well, I'm just going to raise pricing whenever I want. And it's to a point now where they're even sliding other services in there like, hey, we're selling you um, this analytics platform. It's like, I didn't, well, it's an opt-out. We, we can add any pricing we want to your, to your thing. And they're like, well, we own the software company, so it's a part of our service. We just started charging you $49 a month. What? <laughs> so you have to opt, opt out of the thing they gave you a free trial, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, we never saw that. <laughs> so that's what kicked it off. That's what, and you know, for me, it was more, I've had some really great exits, not all of them were great. Some of them were amazing. Some of them weren't. That's the, you know, it's, it always sounds glamorous. People are like, oh, you've had eight exits. Like, wow. It's like, it's not, it's not what you think. <laughs> some of them are out of necessity and some of them are purely just amazing. And so I've been able to build things the way I want now. And this was more in alignment with me and trying to help a community. And so it's actually like all over, you'll see like entrepreneurial shepherd, <laughs> which is like a little tagline that has been used because I love helping startups and small and medium sized companies. And when we did the original study, $50 billion is being charged above the profit margin. Take interchange out, like you're still getting your cash back and all of that stuff. $50 billion is getting taken out of small and medium sized companies. This doesn't happen to Fortune 50s. It doesn't happen to most of the Fortune 500s. These are the regular mom and pop shop places that can't afford the burden. They end up taking most of it. So if I can shave off two or three billion dollars in that mission accomplished. I'm sitting here listening to you just almost can bring tears to my eyes about what is happening in the industry. And I, and I want to go back for a minute because for those of you that have never listened to me on In Touch with Terry, uh, welcome to the tribe, number one, and thank you so much. And for those of you that are part of my tribe, I always talk about the why. And my why is always first and foremost, my 10-year-old my daughter, Sloan, as you guys know. And the second reason why is is all of you guys that I'm able to help and give back. And third is for partnering with people like Jeremy. So I want to go back for a second and talk about the purpose of the partnership because this isn't me just having a guest 
just to have a guest, when I met him and learning about his story and his success and some failures, but more importantly, the advocacy that he has for businesses. Uh, You just heard him talk about $50 billion. I mean, this is sad. His goals and advocacy is in a direct alignment with what we believe here at Terry Ross Consulting, as I mentioned earlier. And I have seen him put significant money back into clients' pockets, you know, taking most of the guesswork away from you. You just heard him talk about this machine learning and the data that you couldn't even interpret or a forensic accountant couldn't interpret. And that's a scary place to be. So this resonated with me because all of the practices that I have had the pleasure and the honor to work with, you guys are busy focusing on your patients and outcomes and trying to run your business while the banks have unlimited resources to extract every penny from you know from you guys so jeremy's technology has made me realize that this is the kind of person and partner and organization i want to partner with to be able to help you along with him and there's a simple way to leverage ai you know from our benefit with minimal effort for you guys so you know fighting banks and processors means jeremy needs to keep the technology out of the mainstream public awareness, relying on trusted relationships rather than traditional advertising, which makes our collaboration really less of a partnership. We just have a shared vision together to bring you guys this technology and to be able to work with a company such as his. So when you're like, oh God, I know that I'm struggling in my practice and I want to work with Terry, but you guys almost have this thought like, oh gosh, you know, can I, can I afford this investment? You know, part of us in working with us is to be able to work alongside of Jeremy so that we can help you save significant money. So Jeremy, let's kind of dive into a little bit about what makes Verify any different because I know running a company... I get hit up every month with people hitting me up about pitching me. They're going to save me money, blah, blah, blah. I've switched providers before and it ended up being just a total mess. And so for those of you guys listening, I'm sure you can resonate with what I'm saying. And it ended ended up costing me more money. So I know, again, you guys are all listening. Practice owners can agree with me on this if you've ever been in this predicament and position. Switching doesn't mean it's cheaper. So what makes you guys different? That's a great question. I think the challenge that I've had in even talking about payment, so a couple of things. One, the partnership is is super important to us because it's advocacy at a level that doesn't get national attention. And I don't want it to because I believe that they're going to try really hard to shut me down. And I'm, I'm expecting that. So call me Robin Hood right now. (laughs) <laughs> but we are, we are we are literally trying to take money out of their pockets. It's going to be significant, and we've already run seven billion dollars in transactions through our system. God, which which seems like a lot. Remember that we're saving fractions yeah. of a percent, so it's not you know it's not what where we want it to be. I think I can reach so many more people, but it takes having that kind of a trusted partnership for them to see it. Because the second I say, "Hey, I can save you money in your credit card," pro- click, click, yeah, like. Click, I- the, what 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 just happened? Well, it's the same pitch. It you know it's kind of like if you ever seen like a magic trick, somebody does it with cards. And you're like, yeah. oh, I've seen that one before. Like, no, it's a different ending. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I, I I think the hardship here is getting past the immediate tie to even saying the word credit card processing. People cringe like, uh, yeah. It, it it's like a very nothing against anybody in used car sales, but it's a very used car salesy. Yeah business technique. Yeah. So for me, it's really difficult to get over that threshold. But then when people see what I do, they understand like, wait a second. So I don't have to, so this is the big why what's so different about what we do. We just become an extension, a partner with our clients. No different than if you had a very large scale, sophisticated supply chain team who did vendor relations every year. Most companies, small and medium-sized companies, they don't have that kind of sophistication. It's also why the Fortune 50s aren't paying money above interchange. They just aren't because they go back to the table and, yes, they have leverage. They're doing millions of dollars a day in processing. It's a little bit easier to pay less when you're doing that kind of business. But that doesn't mean that the small and medium-sized businesses don't have that opportunity. I've gotten pricing for companies as small as $50,000 a month that companies that do $500 million are paying. It has nothing to do with volume. It really doesn't. It's just 
a numbers game. It really is. So there's a cost and a cost plus model. That's it. So, you know, they're just tagging on whatever they want. And look, I'm not trying to take profit off the table. They do provide service, right? I mean, they have connectivity. I mean, you and I, I love walking into a store. I can tap and it's super simple. I love the seamless payment environment, but I'm not willing to pay. I I don't think businesses should be willing to pay 6%. More recently, what's happened every time I get introduced, they're like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not interested. It's like, we do it no cost up front. So we don't charge anything. We only split the savings with our customers. So we'll do all the analysis, all the negotiation, all the supply chain analysis, if you will. We look at their tech. We even do advisory from a perspective of things that I consider DIY. Um, I'll give you some examples. And everybody should do this. So here's a freebie. It's really easy to do. If you are paying $10 a month for a paper statement, call them right now and turn that off. You can get it electronically imprinted if you need to, but almost every processor charges $10, $15, $20 a month for a paper statement. No one reads the damn thing. And you're probably taking it and taking pictures or scanning it in to something anyway. What's the point? They all have an electronic copy, but every single one of them charges excessively for these paper statements. Shut it down. So everybody can do that. There's $10 right there. There's a ton of other DIY things like level two and level three data. There's pin debit issues. So we look at that from an advisory perspective at no cost. We're just trying to help. The stuff that where we make our money and how we help our customers is when we save them substantial amount of money. So more than $300 a month, it's kind of a minimum for us to even want to do this. So we love to work with companies to just look and see what can we do to help. So it's vastly different because you're not switching processors, you're not setting up a new account, you're not going through underwriting, which has gotten extraordinarily more difficult in the last three years than it has forever. I mean, people say, yeah, I went online, I set up my account in like two minutes. It's not like that anymore. Uh, there's there's a significant change in all this regulatory issue. So KYC and AML, so know, know your customer. AML is like anti-money laundering, Like there's so many checks that have to go through and then they literally put the rubber glove on and go after your financials. And it's really difficult to set up an account. You can't just go online and do it point and click. So when you look at all the things that you have to do in order to set up a new account, that's not something you have to do with me. (laughs) So I think this really big key differentiator, that's what credit card processors pitch. Come over to our service. It's going to be way more cost effective. I'm going to save you a ton of money. And what people don't account for when they do this nightmarish switch is hardware, software integration, the cost to switch. If their accounting systems are set up a certain way and they're they're like looking at their books a certain way, all of that stuff gets impacted. And the process is, they don't care. They don't account for that. They don't think about office staff who have to now use a different system or be retrained. If you have POS systems, they don't care about like reprogramming all of that stuff. So the reality is switching is an absolute nightmare headache. And when people are approached to save a bunch of money, they don't account for all that other stuff. Payment brokers has absolutely nothing to do with that. Our, our goal is purely to help you negotiate and use real data proprietary data that we get out of your statements to, to go to the processor together with you and help you reduce those expenses for good. Now, the problem is, we just talked about this, they can change pricing at will without notice. And so what here's what happens. A company will call their processor and say, hey, I just saw the show. I can reduce my expense. I want a cost reduction. And they'll give them one, but they'll just move it right back up. And there's no way for people to tell how much they're paying. Now, there's going to be a lot of people that raise their hand and say, yeah, but I pay a flat rate. That's a big mistake. This is part of the problem that we have not only adopted, but we're pushing to the market 3%. You see it because you go to a restaurant and they charge you 3% for credit card processing fees. So it's been a good problem and a bad problem. The good problem is everybody knows it costs money now. Before people were like, hey, how come America how come you don't take American Express? <laughs> because back then it was really one of the most expensive cards to take because they have the best rewards. So, or had the best rewards. And so there herein lies a real problem. We have trained consumers 
that it's 3%. It's not. It's not 3%. We need to stop doing this. It, it, and if anybody's paying 3%, fast forward to the end of this, get my contact information. There's so much money on the table. Yeah, I mean, there's so much money on the table at that point. It's not right. A debit card costs 0.25%. So if you're just flat rate, like I want a flat rate, a normal Visa non high rewards card is about 1.29%. Let's talk about 3% again. Somebody's like, yeah, I just pay a flat rate. It's like 2.9 and 30 cents. And so this is a problem. That's not what it actually costs. We've just normalized it. And now we've passed it on to consumers. So everybody's like surcharging, which they're going to make illegal. They've done it in California. They've now done it in several other states. They're going to make it illegal to surcharge. It's a part of the junk fee rule that's being passed. And there's a lot of different advocacy around surcharging anyway. It's just not right to hyperinflate the market, but we keep fighting the wrong people. <laughs> we keep going after Visa and MasterCard. That's not the problem. Like th there's been a 10 year, or I think even longer than that, 20 year dogfight between all these le legislative activities that went after Visa MasterCard and they got four, they finally settled recently and they made this big announcement. We, we've saved merchants billions of dollars through this settlement, four basis points. That's four one hundredths of a percent. We didn't move the needle at all. It didn't do anything. It has no impact to anyone. If you look at the average merchant, it's maybe 80 or $90 a year. There's a huge article on my website about this because I'm so frustrated with how they've spun all of this just to continue to go after everyone. So you ask me what's different. I'm an advocate. I am actually partners with, my, with our customers no different than if you were to hire a supply chain person to come and work for you to help you reduce your expenses. That's what we do. And I think that's why when you and I talked, we hit it off right away because I saw how you talked passionately about your people as if it were your family. And for me, this is a passion project that actually works extremely well and makes a ton of money. And it's a win, win, win. The processor keeps the business and I don't take the profit off the table. The customer stays where they're at. They don't have to change their equipment or POS or software or hardware, their EHR integration, all these other toys that they're all connected to. They don't have to retrain their staff. They don't have to like figure out a way to download statements, get to their accountant. Like none of that has to change. It just stay with who you are and we make money doing it. And the bottom line is the customer saves a ton of money. That's really the major difference between us and when somebody says, hey, I can save you money on your credit card processing. Yeah, yeah. If this one question that I asked, like why is Verify different, didn't hit home with you and resonate, please rewind because this is no joke. You've heard about his background, his his success, his passion project, his entrepreneur shepherd, even helping me in my business too. But this is real and no one understands the ramifications and the dynamics of what's happening in this industry more important to your business. And so there's no easier lift. I'm going to give you this little nugget right now, and we'll talk about it more as we continue through this segment. But just my Terry Ross Consulting clients, on the low end, Jeremy, what? on the low end, I think we have someone saving 800 to 1000 a month. And on the high end, 12 to 15 grand a month. You guys, I want that to sit in and sink for a second. That is a ton of money, a ton of money. So when you guys are calling me or seeking advice or you're, you're seeing me lecture at, at conferences and you're struggling with your business, you want more revenue, you want more profits. As you know, private equity is coming in. There's huge roll-ups and huge consolidation. You want to build a legacy for your business that we help you do to achieve the highest multiples that you deserve. This is probably one of the only ways I can show you how to make more money, right? Through training and teaching and treatment plans. And, but from a cost reduction, I mean, shit, this pays my fees in like two seconds. So it, it really is to Jeremy's point, a win, win, win all around. I want to continue because there's so many more burning questions that I think people have and including myself. How do people make sense 
of the complicated statements because I know that I recently looked at mine and I'm like, I don't even know how the hell to make sense of it. And so to your point, what you just said, wouldn't I just pay a flat fee and be like, oh, that's cool and keep it simple? Why is it so complicated? And you kind of were just hitting on that a little bit. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So simple payments are the most expensive. So the more the, the more ease they make for you, the more expense it's going to be to you. So they have, and I say they, I mean, this has been over years that we've driven towards this magic number of 3%. That needle is moving too, because now they're talking about adding regulatory and compliance on top of it. And it, it's starting to get so much more complicated. And I think the complication is, hey, look, we'll make it easy for you. We'll just, you know what, instead of three, we'll just charge you four. And it's just going to keep going, right? So, and look, like I said, I think there's value in what they do. I think there's a, just been an amazing, amazing opportunity to move from what we used to do with like the old card reader thing, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, the two, I'm, I'm putting age on myself to say, even knowing that thing exists. Um, Me too. But I mean, going from that to where we can like walk into a place and it just charges you like that. We're almost there, <laughs> which I'm scared to death of. So it's amazing that we've made that and I'm never worried. Like if somebody steals my credit card, I'm not even worried anymore. Like they've, they've figured out all of the other things. So I'm not taking away from them making money and being profitable. I, I, I don't want to, I want them to continue the innovation and the cool things that we're doing. I want to continue the fight against all of the bad things that are happening with people's cards and identities being stolen. And so continue to do that, but like, let's be reasonable. No one should be a 5% partner in your business. That's not providing tremendous amount of value. Moving money from one place to another is not a 5% partnership. I'm sorry. Now look, this is where, and maybe the dirt comes out, the complexity is all the levels of people in between. So that's one complexity. And then it's what we talked about earlier, interchange and how complex all of these different credit cards are. I think what's going to happen is maybe at some point, That'll all pare down to a single point, but I just doubt it because they love the complication. You can't read it on purpose. I'm in the industry and it takes me hours to read a couple pages of these statements. So it's not really even a human's job. There are some simple things you can do to identify how much you're actually paying. That's something everyone should do. But beyond that, getting into the detail of interchange, you're just never going to do it. So the unfortunate answer is there is no way to read these statements and if it's too easy, it's too expensive. And you know, you were just saying valuation. Like, if I can save people fifty basis points, half a percent, and sometimes upwards of two and three percent in really special cases, think about the multiple that you would exit a company for with that extra percent. So, I mean, two percent times I don't know what the multiples are in, in, the, in the industry. I've I've exited eight companies, so I know they range really drastically depending on the industry or practice. So between four and 12, I don't know, that could be a huge differentiator. So, I mean, you know, so you're taking up, you know, 1% and timesing it by four. I mean, that's a significant number. Um, not to mention it's just cash flow. Like it's immediate cash flow right to the bottom line with no hurdles in between. So these are things that everyone should do. It's just the most fiscally responsible thing to do is to at least look. The second piece is take action. And I, 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 beg people not to try to do this themselves because doing it the once very easy you call you say i want a discount they just like nominally throw a number on the board and say hey it's going to save you a bunch of money which it may not um i talked about there's a rate and a transaction fee you know if your average ticket and then this is a goofy thing to do but one company called and said i'm paying way more than i paid before and i got a discount and i was like well let me see what you were paying before so this just so happens to be a national ice cream shop chain. Their average ticket's $11. So they said, hey, you're currently paying you know, X percent. We're going to drop it by 1%. That's huge. What they didn't tell them is when they dropped it 1%, they added a 10 cent transaction fee. 10 cents on $10 is significant. <laughs> so... When they take a $3 charge or a $5 charge, what's 10 cents of $3? It's, it's a massive number. So they didn't pay attention to all the other rates and fees associated and they ended up getting crushed. So it's 
it's not to say that people understand what to negotiate, but also like how you need to have the numbers of where they're making money in order to negotiate. So that's really, again, that's the difference between us. That's also how people should read their statements. And, and that is don't read it. <laughs> so that You have to have professional help to do that, really. Well, and you know, kind of what I always say, I'm like, you know, if I can get you further faster, which you can too, right? You invented this machine learning for a reason. And everybody, I, I mean, I hope to God, like your phone is just flourishing with calls. Um, and you said it, it's it's just the responsible thing to do for yourself. So let's kind of continue on because I, I want to try to cover all the questions I know I get from clients and you do. You know, you mentioned too, how does this impact the practice management software, their EHR software, and their POS systems? I know one of the biggest pain points clients ask and you know, all the time <laughs> is uprooting their processing, changing something, the lack of integration. They get scared. And so, but I heard you saying a minute ago, it doesn't affect any of that, which is just music to my ears. So let's talk about that. So here comes the dirt. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. this one's a dangerous topic. Cause I don't want to, you know, anger the industry, but I'm going to. So that's what I'm here to do. Let's bring it on the controversy controversy. Yeah, it's a little, a little bit controversial. What I'm about to say, they went into business to sell their software and help people. And then they met payment people. And the payment people were like, hey, listen, here's an idea. Just give away your software for free and charge them 6% of their revenue. And that's what's happening. There is all these back alley treaties, and I, I'm not going to name names of EHR companies, but there's not many of them, but they're all doing it. They've all signed a treaty with a processor, and they've said, we're not going to work with third-party processors anymore, and they can charge whatever they want. And I've got an email from one of them. I would love to read it publicly, but I'm not going to for probably a bunch of legal reasons. <laughs> But yeah. they said, we don't have to negotiate. They have to use us. That's terrible. That is absolutely anti-competitive environment at that point. And so what they've done, and I can prove it because I have records of it, because I analyze the statement every single month, they keep adding more and more. The bigger the practice gets, the more they're paying. And they, they know that they're stuck because they can't switch because they would have to uproot their entire EHR system. So it's unfortunate that these treaties are being made and I'm working tirelessly. And this is not the only industry that suffers this. It's every industry. These software companies know they're called ISVs, integrated software vendors, payment processing companies target them specifically to sell their service and get embedded because they know once if it's a absolute necessity software that runs these organizations. It's like, yeah, now our, now your payments are all secure and they're all in this really neat environment. And it's awesome because, you know, they fill out their patient record stuff and then they can check out right there. It's like, that's great. Do you know what it costs you? And one of them is just predatory. I hate to say it that way, but it is. So it's a question that should be asked up front. And at some point collectively, there needs to be a, a threat. And I, you know, I did this in another industry. It was ultra successful in terms of bringing a group of their customers together because they won't negotiate and saying, we'll all leave collectively. You will lose 80% of your business. Open it up, make it free market choice like they should have. It's not, it's not something that they did that's so expensive to integrate. I, I'm, I'm telling you, it's a click of the button for the processors to integrate multiple processors and let them choose. But that's not how it works. And so they call it sticky payments. <laughs> that's what it's called. Like you get stuck and they just raise the price. Now, this also happens with POS systems. I'll say this one publicly, Clover. If anybody has a Clover, you're stuck. You get embedded with the apps and the timesheets in there. And all this is has all these cool things. And you're like, yeah, I love it. And then I look at a statement. I'm like, you're paying 6.5%. Is it worth it? And they're like, well, I can't switch now. I got all these things. I'm like, that's great. And I look, like I said, Add value, that's awesome. 6% is wrong. Because they're also charging them for the software and the hardware and the like, and, 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 and a bunch of ands on top of it. It's, it's crazy. So that's, I'm, I hate to say that's the dirt, but that's the dirt. The, the industry, your industry has it. I've, I've dealt with it um, with multiple software vendors. So here's the, here's the bad news. I can't help everybody. There are definitely going to be, you know, companies that come to me and they're like, look, I'm paying 7%. I'm like, well, you, I can't negotiate with that company. I'm sorry. And in, in that case, I don't have an option for them other than they need to know what they're paying. 
you got to look at the total cost of ownership of the things you use. So at the end of the day, it's like, at least, you know, and I'm happy to provide the data at no cost. Go look, this is what you're paying. At some point, collectively, I'll come back to them and say, hey, look, I've got 20 people that are using the same EHR. Collectively, I think you're, you know, significant volume. Let's go together. You, they want to play that game. We can play it too. It takes a little bit of advocacy there as a group. <laughs> It does. It does. There's probably not a day that goes by that I don't get asked in some form, whether it's someone's calling me, texting me, emailing me, DMing me. I'm at conferences. And it's, Terry, what software? What software should I use? I swear to God. And there's 60, six, zero practice management softwares in aesthetic medicine. Now, I could probably give you the top five. And we're working with them. And, and now what, what's coming up? And you know what I say is, there there is no great software and they're, they're not perfect, but for in one, from my, as a consultant's perspective, I'm like, it's only going to be as good as you know how to use it one, but then two, to your point, what is this conglomerate of all these potential fees that could be happening that we just don't know and we don't know what to ask. So I'm going to make this plug right now because Jeremy and I are working together on so many amazing, incredible things for you guys. But I talk a lot about a business evaluation that we do here uh, at Terry Ross Consulting. And Jeremy's going to be part of that because for those of you that, look, I say this often on stage, busy doesn't mean being profitable. I hope to God that you're busy and that you're six months out and three months out and all this stuff that I hear all the time. But when I start to look at books and P&Ls and balance sheets and write, it's not where it needs to be. And I have practices that have grown two, three million dollars a year. That's just the growth, let alone I'm not even getting into the cost savings. So if, you, if you've you never done a business evaluation, I don't mean valuation on your business. I mean a business like where I'm doing a practice assessment, a business evaluation, diving deep into uncover, and I never say what's wrong, the areas of opportunity. Part of that is going to be working with Jeremy in terms of saving you guys money um, is just critical for your business. So Jeremy, now let's get into, you know, what can the clients do? I mean, how do they know that they're going to get screwed over? You know, since you're talking about how difficult it is to read a statement, they don't know what they're paying, if it's 3% or more. What can they do to know if it's a good rate? Clearly, well, I'm not going to say what can they do. What can they do is I hope to God they're going to be calling you or me the minute that this segment is over. But what else can they do? I know you said you had some kind of fun exercises. So simple, simple technique. Yeah, simple technique. Take your statement out. So you can pause this, go grab a statement. If you don't know where to find it, it's it's traditionally like when you log into your credit card processing software, if you will, you can find statements in there. What I recommend you don't do is call your credit card processor and ask them for a statement. That is a really, really sensitive trigger that they've all built these tools around. They'll send you an email. The second you ask a credit card processor for a statement, they go right into loss prevention mode because they think some credit card processor pitched you that they can save you money and they want to see your statement so they can save you money. So you have to be very cautious about getting this statement because you're going to trigger all these salespeople calling you. They're going to offer you all these discounts, which isn't real. We'll take a statement and analyze it and tell you how much, but you can do a really simple thing. Take your total bottom line in fees. Now, they've made this a little tricky too. Sometimes they'll bill you this month's fees on the next month's statement. It's called back billing. So another horrible practice because people were telling them how to do the analysis. So take your total fees, divide it into your revenue, your total credit card processing revenue that you took that month, and you're going to get a little decimal, right? So it's going to be like 0025, 0031. 004. If you see anything more than 0022, then I would say pick up the phone and call me or send me an email or go to verify.com or paymentbrokers.com. Request information. Go call Terry. Find some help because above that number, there are at least 30 to 50 basis points to go after at that number. If it's three, if you see 003, 004, you better be in a hurry. Because here's how this works. We just got a statement June 3rd to 5th, depending on what credit card processor you're with. They've written all the rules. You have like three business days to get back to them 
with any discrepancies. No one can even read the statement. I, if I had, to, if you handed me a, a real statement from a company doing hundreds of thousands a month, it would take me a month. It was just, it's just too much time. So I think they've done that so that you can't go back to them and say, hey, I have a discrepancy. My tool does it in one second. So I can drag the statement right into our tool. It automatically detects the company you're with. We have to build a template for every single company because they all have totally different way to present the rates and fees. And once I have that template done, it one second, I drag it over. It's like, here's how much they're making. And it's pretty cool. So from that point forward, now I have the data. And within a day, we get things kicked off. You get an email. It's like, here's how much we can save you to your bottom line. Do you want to move forward? Yes. Great. Here's an agreement. The agreement's just for us to do the negotiation on your behalf. Now we work with you. We become an extended part of your team. So we're not going to call on underpayment brokers or verify. We just become a part of your team. Just like if you hired a supply chain person to come in and work for you. And from that day forward, we do the negotiation and analysis every single month. So the day the statement comes out, it goes right into our system and it says, Hey, they changed it and we're right back on the phones. This is literally no lift. You don't have to do any work on your side, but the sooner you do, like by the 15th, I'm, I'm basically cut off for the month. I'm not going to be able to recoup people's money for June. So I'm in a mad rush every month to get everybody's statement by the third or fifth, get it into our system because if there's any discrepancies, our, our team is back on the phone like, fighting for every penny because that's how we make money. We only make money if we're successful. If we do all that work and the processor says, no, it didn't cost you a thing. Didn't take you more than two minutes to pull a statement and send it to us. If you see that number, take your total in fees, divide in your revenue, anything greater than 2.2% or 002, get on the phone. And larger practices with big revenue, if it's above, you know, one nine, then you should call us anyway. Uh, you guys need to, again, go back, pause, listen to what he said, the the fees divided by the revenue. And he gave you, I know I have in my mind right now, I have so many clients, right? So many private equity groups and brokers and people that own two, three locations. I just have so many people that I want to call right now and help and make sure that they're right over to you. Our intention is one to, to just make you guys aware and bring to the forefront the light of what is happening and what you need to be doing fiscally for your business with, again, such ease and no lift. I mean, his his technology is going to do this for you. So I have one last question, and then I want to get into like how people can work with you and contact me. I think you've mentioned it a few times. You know, can't customers discharge the 3% you know, for paying for their credit card? And, you know, can't I just charge my customers more money? You know, what's the surcharging? Yeah, if you want to help the banks and processors charge more money. That's how, that's how this works. So what I've seen more recently is the surcharging, which I think I mentioned earlier, they're going to turn that off too. They don't want the consumers to know that it costs 3%. But we've normalized this 3% number, which the first problem is there. So what, what companies said is, I'm not paying these fees. I'm going to pass them right on to our customer, which is a horrible customer experience. Because if I'm there and I'm ready to pay and you're telling me now it's going to be 3% more at the time of checkout, that's a problem for me. Now, it happens more often than I'd like it to. I live in Miami Beach. It's it's every, it's very prominent everywhere you go. 3%, 3%, 3%. But they're going to ban it. So they're banning junk fees. I wrote a huge article about it on, the, on my website. They're going after surcharging. The problem with charging 3% more is that the processor just makes charges you 3% on the 3% you just took. So just get their revenue just goes up by 3%. You're only helping the processor, you're not helping the customer, and you're not helping your business from the optics of, hey, I surcharge. It's just not a good look. Then people are going to say, well, I'll take cash, cash discounting. That's another terminology. Like it's 3% if you use a credit card, but feel free to pay me cash, which, you know, in the larger ticket business, no one's walking around with $10,000 in cash. Like, let's be realistic. So like wire transfer for $20. It's like, come on, like somebody's going to pay these fees at some point. Cash is way more expensive than credit cards. People don't know that. I'm, I should have an article written on that this week. People don't realize you have to have safes and security and Brinks trucks are not cheap. There's a lot more to having a ton of cash in your business. And there was a study done and it's like 7% is what the cost of cash is. By the way, you can't deposit large amounts of cash either. They charge you for it, which is crazy to me. And there's no people in the bank anyway. So it, it's like all computers now. So I think in general, 
I, I don't recommend charging 3% because you actually don't recoup all 3%. And what you're doing is going to, you're further normalizing this 3% number. So as a business community, we should not be doing that. We're also hyper inflating the market. Listen, I'm not saying you don't charge 3% more for your products holistically and just call it a day. You should, if you do that, you should still be fiscally responsible. You should still get your rates and fees down. If you're going to charge your customer 3% more, at least make some money doing it. <laughs> don't don't you just give it straight to, you're just like, here you go, processor. Like, uh, I'm not going to do the work. Let me do the work. I'll do it for you. So that's that's really the unfortunate thing that's happening right now is yeah. everybody just wants to pass yeah. the buck, literally. Oh my God. Well, listen, Jeremy, this was so enlightening and eye-opening. I'm truly, I, I feel like I'm sitting here with like goosebumps because I, I, I'm so excited about this partnership with you. Just the amount of information that I, again, continue to learn from you every time we talk. And Tribe, you guys are my ride or dies. You guys are my family. And this isn't just applicable to the aesthetic space, but this is my zone of genius. And you guys were here with the greatest level of intention to, again, help you be profitable, be efficient, make money, save money. So I'm going to invite you to reach out to myself, as you guys know, at Terry Ross Consulting, part of the business evaluation or when you work with us is you're going to be working alongside of Jeremy and payment brokers at Verify as well. And Jeremy, where can people find you? How do they work with you? How can they call you other than going through me? Please give that information and you guys in the show notes will have all that information as well. It's really important to our business that we build partnerships because this is, I think you've mentioned it really early on, we can't use traditional advertising. My hands are tied here. I, the last thing I need is banks and processors going, wait a second, what's happening? They should call this Robin Hood. That's what we should have named the company. Yeah. I think there's a trading yeah. platform we'd probably have a problem with. Um, <laughs> there is, there is. <laughs> so, I have some money in there, too. by the way. I hope I'm making yeah, some money. Hopefully it's not in game stock. <laughs> so the, the, the challenge here is I don't want that kind of attention, but I want that kind of attention. So I am super reliant on relationships that I have with partners. And it's important to me for people to work with that partner because it's also streamlines our work. So it's easier for them to reach out to you. We're happy to help too. You can reach out to us direct. But 99% of our business today comes from our partnerships with CPA firms which is like what an amazing relationships we have with some national, large national uh, CPA groups. We have a ton of bit business advocacy groups that are super in invested in what we're doing. We have a lot of associations. And when I say a lot, like I think there's 30 now, totally different industries like pool industry association and others that are like, this impacts our customers. You can help them save money. Like it's a tool to have in your tool belt, but we are super reliant on that partner to channel that to us because it's otherwise it would, I, I don't know how we would handle it internally. We're a small agile team here. So we're trying to do everything we can. We're, we're just a bunch of nerds at the end of the day. So, <laughs> so that's helpful. Also, you know, the industry. So there's some complexities that we learn from partners that we would have never gotten the opportunity to learn like EHR and EHM and all these other acronyms of things that I don't want to learn that I had to about how their process of processing works. It's really important to work with our partners to do that. That's why I love working with you on this because being in alignment was number one, but also like the reach into the right people that are actually trying to help the industry. That's really what we're here to do, right? I, I really feel like we've made a dent already it's not big enough. There's $50 billion. Trust me, we haven't saved $50 billion because we're splitting the savings. It'd be a very different company <laughs> at that point. I would just like to shave off a billion this year. That's our target. And I think we'll actually get there. No joke. We're getting to huge companies, which I didn't think we'd be able to help massive companies. We've had some really big names. And now the advisory firms, the big five advisory firms, are also reaching out to us. So those partnerships are amazing too, but they're all big companies. I want small and medium-sized companies. That's where we can make the biggest dent. So I'm, I'm happy to work with you on this. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, uh, I hope this sits with you. I hope this resonates with you. If it did, I know it did. Uh, I shared with you a little bit earlier, this is just with clients of Terry Ross Consulting now, people are saving on the low end, like I said, 800 to 1,000 on the low end, upwards of 12 to 15 grand 
a month. So this is for everyone. I don't want you to be sitting there. I don't care if you have one location doing 40, 50 grand a month, or if you have 10 or 20 doing you know hundreds of thousands a month. Jeremy's technology, this company, this is the reason we are friends. This is the reason we are partners. This is the reason we are both sharing the same level of passion and advocacy for you. So please don't hesitate. And if you are in the aesthetic space, and you are struggling, you know you want to get further faster, let us help you save time and money. And that is by working with us. And that's jointly. So please reach out, uh, go on the website, terryrossconsulting.com. There's a discovery form. Jeremy is going to give this little worksheet that we're going to have you guys download and be able to do quickly. He gave you that math. You can find me on Instagram. And if you found this podcast helpful, if you have other friends in the business that are going to resonate with this and find this valuable, please, I invite you to share share it. And friends out of the industry too, you see what he's trying to do. This is a movement, you guys. This is a movement that is going to happen quick and fast and swift. And I'm asking you to be on this movement with us. So with that being said, Jeremy, again, founder, CEO, entrepreneur, shepherd of Verify, I'm so honored to have you here, call you a friend and to be able to work with you on this journey together. So with that said, you guys, please don't hesitate. I'm expecting you. I am waiting for you to be reaching out to me right now today at terryrossconsulting.com and Verify, of course. So I will see you guys on the next episode of In Touch with Terry. Ciao, guys. Thanks for listening to In Touch with Terry. If you are ready to go further, faster, and save money in your business, then working with Terry and Jeremy is a no-brainer. To learn more about having your credit card statements analyzed at no cost so that you can save money and or do a business evaluation for your practice, please visit terryrossconsulting.com and mention this podcast, In Touch with Terry.